session for us today. We thank you that you you're just so good 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 God. Now Father we thank you tonight for the blood of Jesus that covers each and every one of us. Lord we we're not going to be too busy where we couldn't come to say thank you tonight. This is a holy week. This is a holy time where we focus on you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we ask now that you move up and down every hour, touch every person here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We take authority of all the power of the enemy that would try to come against us. Every demonic spirit that would try to hinder, distract, 
I command one million of the hosts to move right now. Drive away the darkness. Drive away the evil. Drive away every spirit of heaven and spirit of doubt. I'm the leader. Push it out right now. Fight! Right now. In the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. For every sign, one did miracle that will take place. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. We want to welcome you to Dunamis Christian Faith Church, amen. the most miraculous place on earth where the presence and power of God yeah. resides and rests. We thank you for all of those that are watching via social media around the world. Thank you for joining us for this special, special Good Friday service. We want to say thank you, share the, share the live. There may be some watching at home uh, that want to be a part of this. Some may have to work. Some may have to be in different places. But we say welcome to the presence of Almighty God. I want you to take your seats. I'm going to talk to you tonight about the power of self-denial. If y'all could give me just 15 minutes. And then after I share this word with you, we're going to have a special communion service in time. This is a sacred time. This is a time where we honor God. We thank God for all our guests that are with us tonight. Those that have come to celebrate with us and be with us tonight. I want to say it's good to see Elder Sam in the house tonight. Amen. 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 Always good to see my son. Amen. John chapter 12. And someone say the power of self-denial. Self I mean, you know, Jesus was the most selfless person ever. Yeah. He left heaven and all this glory and power to come and die for us and redeem us. He redeemed us with his life with his blood hallelujah surely we can say thank you now look at this john chapter 12 verse 20 says now there was a certain there were certain greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast then they came to philip who was from bethany but bethesda of galilee and asked him saying sir we wish to see jesus anybody want to see jesus tonight yeah. We wish to see Jesus. Glory to God. Philip came and told Andrew. And in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them saying, the hour has come that the son of man should be glorified. Now we can ready to see how you, you, you'll be glorified. Watch what he says. Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Verse 23 says, me, I'm sorry, verse 24 and Amplify says, I assure you, most solemn, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just one grain. It never becomes more, but but lives by itself alone. That ties in. I, I want to what you to understand. Jesus was talking about himself. Yeah. He was a seed. John three sixteen says, "For God so loved the world that he what hey. gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life." But somebody had to die yeah. in order for more sons of God to be produced someone had to die and that somebody was Jesus he had to die but notice what it says because but when it dies but if it dies it produces much grain notice what it says but if it dies 
See, so that's on us. We're talking about the power of self to now. Sometimes we have to die. Paul said, I die daily. We live in a generation now where everybody's trying to save themselves. Everybody's trying to vindicate themselves. But if you're like Jesus, you're going to have to learn how to die. You're going to have to learn how to die quietly. You got to learn how to walk in quiet power and that you can't respond to everything somebody do to you. See, a person that has died, I feel my help coming, Trey. I know I got that. It's, it's got to come for. I, you know you're dead when you pray for your enemies. You know you're dead when you pray for those that despitefully use you. Jesus said to bless those that curse you. You can't do that if you're not dead. We only want to like those that like us. But what about those that's assassinating you? What about those that's crucifying you with the words? Can you maintain quiet power and let God defend you? You have to learn how to die and die quietly because that's when the fruit going to begin to come. See, except that seed go down. Sometimes you got to take the low road even when you're right. Even when you're right, sometimes just be quiet. Because guess what? The truth don't need no help. Why would God say pray for your enemies? My hands are on fire tonight. I, I just laid hands on my wife in the car on the way because the power of God's all over me. How many of y'all was here Wednesday night? Yes. The presence of God <laughs> blew through this place and it's here now. Yes. Why would God say pray for your enemies? Can you tell me why he would say pray for your enemies? Yeah, we can pray that they get saved. God said, pray for them because vengeance is mine. <laughs> oh, God. And I, you need to pray for your enemies that God doesn't exact vengeance on them. Think about how protective you are of your children. Especially these mamas. Yes. Don't let them mamas have to go up to that school. Yeah. <laughs> Security. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. It, it's going to take an army. Because they're going to protect them kids. Right, wrong, indifferent. And even if they wrong, you say, that's all right. But when they get home. Ah, uh, come on, somebody. It's going to be, don't you make me have to come back up to the school again. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Right? But you have to deny yourself. I know it's hard. That's why you got to be nailed to the cross. So you can't move. See, when you're nailed to the cross, you can't slap nobody. You can't kick nobody. All you can do is sit there and bleed. All you can do is sit there, come on, Pastor Sheila, and bleed out. So that's the whole message of the cross. It's self-denial. Do you deny yourself on a daily basis? And I'm not just talking about denying yourself of sin. Sometimes it, some of the things God is asking you to deny ain't necessarily wrong. Sometimes he's asking you to deny things so he can spend more time with you. So don't go there. Spend some time with me. Turn the TV off. Get off social media. Get off social media. Get off. Get off. Because you're going to have to do some dying. 
If you stay on that social media, oh y'all listening to me? See, I said I die daily. Because watch this, watch this, watch this. Mr. Megan, when, when they're coming for you, look what it says. Don't try to save yourself. Because it says there, he who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. See, you, you can't be trying to save yourself. You're going to have to die so that you can live. Jesus had to die so that we can have eternal life. Someone say amen. amen. Someone say, I got to deny myself. I deny myself. <laughs> say, I have to die. I have to die. Everybody got an opinion. It's a pandemic of opinions. Amen. And what somebody say, we made it a God of our opinions. And when nobody agrees with our opinions, we get upset and offended. It's because you're not dead. Everybody's not required to agree with you. But as believers, come on, we all should be able to agree on the word. That's where you run in trouble is when you start. See, because lots of your stuff that you opinionate about ain't even scripture. Just what you feel. Because you're alive. Touchy. Want to be right. Want to win the argument. Want to win the debate. Come on. But nobody wants to operate in humility. Someone said, I must deny myself. I must deny myself. Matthew, and I'll be done with this portion. Matthew 26. You ain't the first somebody that somebody talked about. You ain't the first somebody folks, where folks have laughed at you. It's not your job to come off the cross to tell somebody to shut up. I mean, you say you like Christ. You said that was. <laughs> Put it at the sound I can see it. Let me see it. I'm scratching here. <laughs> we don't want to die. Look at uh, Matthew 27. Trey, whenever you need to roll. Matthew 27. Then the soldiers of the 27, 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole garrison around him. See, there's always a crowd won't see you get stripped. There's always a crowd of haters that won't see you get embarrassed. But are you dead enough to take it? Come on. So you can live. See, the kingdom is an amazing kingdom because God, Jesus said this, the greatest among you is your servant. How are you great and you don't serve? That's what Jesus said. Oh, I want to sit on his right hand. I want to sit on his left hand. But we don't want clean no toilets. We don't want to sweep the floor at the church. We don't want to usher. We don't want to do nothing for the church but criticize what ain't happening, what this and that and that. You might be operating outside the kingdom with that kind of attitude. The kingdom of God is the kingdom where humility excels. Because you always focus on somebody else. And not yourself. Do you know that if you start focusing on somebody else, God will focus on you. Yes, Seek ye first. Yes. And his righteousness. And what will happen? All these other things you worried about will be what? Talk to me. But you got to learn how to take some betrayal. You got to learn how to take some offense. Look at this. Look at Jesus. It's our last scripture for this portion. 
And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. They took his clothes off in front of everybody. Have you ever been embarrassed in front of everybody? And when they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it in his head. That's mean, ain't it? And a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They mocked him. They didn't, he was the king of the Jews, but they were saying, and in a mock, don't we live in a mocking generation? People love to mock the church. Mock, shouting, and make fun of holy, sacred things. Men putting wigs on, acting like a woman, shouting, trying to be a comedian about the things of God. But I told you that we're moving to an age where God's going to stop all the laughing. God's getting ready to stop all the mocking. Stop all the scoffers. You ain't going to have to say nothing. I told you that eclipse is a sign that we're entering into a new age of glory and power where God himself is going to be manifested. Where you would have to be a fool to say there is no God. Because he loves this world and he loves the people so much that he's going to do everything he can to keep them from perishing. That's why you got to deny yourself. So you got to start denying yourself so you don't get turned over to yourself. Have you ever seen anybody turned over to themselves? Jesus said, I... Jesus, Jesus was the most powerful man in the world. He could have saved, brother, he could have saved himself right then and there. He said, I could have prayed and angels and the host would have came, but he, truth said, don't do it. Because a prophecy had to be fulfilled. Maybe what you're going through, the prophecy over your life got to be fulfilled. And when they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head. And a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they spit on him. They did what? Now, what you going to do? Yeah, my brother back there said, Oh, Jesus. If somebody in your face going off and some spit come out, Are you going to say nail to the cross? Uh, somebody just walk up to you and just spit in your face. I can't stand you. Don't even got to be in my face. Just spit on you. See, y'all y'all, y'all going to hell. Look. <laughs> All y'all going to hell. But I'm by your fish. Jesus took it. Jesus, God took it. You ain't going through nothing worse than what Jesus went through. Watch this. For you. But I keep some bail money on the side. Because somebody will go to jail that night. It's going to be some furniture moving. Well, is it work? Come on. At Popeye's <laughs> or Waffle House. I w who y'all think will win out of the employees from Popeye's or Waffle House? <laughs> Waffle House. <laughs> That's going to be a tie. Notice what it said. <laughs> And they sped on him and took the reed and then they struck him in the head. They did this to Jesus. Who's striking you right now? Who's slandering you? Who's mocking you? The Lord said, take it. Take it. Because it ain't about you. Can you? Deny yourself when they're striking you across your head and you innocent. You shouldn't even be going through this because you never sinned. 
Look at how powerful Jesus is. See, yes, he rose, but look at how he died. Die like a man. Die like a woman. So I'm going to be glorified. Whew. Look at somebody say, I got some work to do. Oh, God, this is some strong character right here. Oh, come on, somebody. See, you might think my wife was coaching me up today. I, say, I, I fought all my whole life. I don't mind rumbling and talking. That's why, rather they say the bishop can't be a brawler. That's why I consider not becoming one. I said, we can't fight. Come on now. Say the bishop can't be a brawler. It don't mean he can't. Oh, we can get down if I had to. But all my boys over there, look at them. They, they don't have all that lightweight stuff. Look at them. Look at look, look, look. That's my vision. No. How many things you love to do? How bad you think you are? But can you walk in the character of Jesus and let him strike you and beat you and put a crown of thorns on your head and you say nothing? You don't have to respond to every allegation, every accusation. You ain't got to respond to every little thing that somebody do or say. We're going to find out how much you grow. Mm -hmm. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe of, of him, took off his robe and put his own clothes on him. And they led him away to be crucified. They did all that. Then they led him away to be crucified. Someone says how he died. That's why we're here tonight. Yes, yeah, see, Sunday's coming. Come on, Sam Duracoli. Yeah. Sunday coming. <laughs> but oh, you got to die first. Good things are coming. Some of y'all are like, man, I don't know. When and when, Lord? The Lord said, die. Yeah. Quit asking me about it. Yeah. Quit worrying about That's it. Good. You know you're dead when you don't worry. That's good. Yeah. When you let it go. Yep. Bobby says, up. Let it go. Cast all your cares upon him. Because he's the one that cares for you. Someone say, let it go. It's on the way. Huh? God, God heard you the first time you prayed. Someone say, hallelujah. Someone say, let it go. Um, that's all I have for you tonight concerning that. Concerning dying. Dying. How many of you could say, oh, there's some errors in my life I need to die? Yes. Yes. You know, when you're tired and you got a church night and you still show up yes. and you give them a praise. Yes. That's called a sacrifice. The old saints used to say there's a blessing in the present. Everybody can say, I'm tired. I ain't going tonight. But can you die? And not only when you get here, you give it your best. Jesus hung on the cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. Surely you can handle a one hour church service. Surely you can have them 15 minutes of praise and worship. That's right. Right. What God requires of us is nothing. Where we need to have more of him. Amen. Yes. Amen. We're going to move into our communion services. I want everybody to put your Bibles up. We're gonna, just going to go with this right now. We can have some play softly. As we move into this portion of the service this is a very sacred time lift your hands say Lord I die daily 
Say, I don't have to win every argument. Say it again. Say, I don't have to respond to every, everything. Say, I will walk in quiet power. Have you ever seen somebody try to get at you and, and, and you didn't say nothing? They got mad. And the quieter you are, the madder they get. Do you hear me talking to you? <laughs> they might even throw a rock at you. But you just keep going to the cross. It's hallelujah. I want to talk to you tonight about the cup of blessings. You see, this communion table is holy. This is something that Jesus did before he died. It, me and Pastor Shoot, somebody was, they, had, they didn't just have bread and wine, they had a meal. Tonight we're going to have a meal together after us. It's something about fellowship. With like minded individuals, good to see Mother Geraldine in the house. Oh, I was texting her back on Facebook. I said, I love Mother. She get married too. Man. The couple blessed the meal Jesus ate with his disciples. The meal we call the Last Supper was the traditional Passover meal. It wasn't just the bread and the wine. It was the entire meal. It was in honor and remembrance of what God did when he delivered his people from Egyptian bondage. The bondage of the enemy. I mean, you know, the Lord brought you out. Since there were four cups of wine used in this ceremony of dinner, look at all the wine people. They were called the cups of blessing. These four, these four cups represented four promises God made to the children of Israel. Exodus 6, and verse 6 and 7. It says, Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you with a stretched out hand and with great justice. And I will take you to me for a people. And I will be to you a God, and ye should know that I am the Lord your God, that bringing you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I want to give you the four promises tonight. Number one, he said, I will bring you out, Pastor Sheila. This is the first cup. And it is the cup of sanctification. Meaning to separate from and set aside for a holy pur purpose. Come on, uh, Minister David, set aside for a purpose. What happened to sanctification? Understand that you ain't supposed to be fitting in with everybody. When you stand out and you the light, the bugs are going to be attracted to you. To use this means to set aside for God's purpose. Each and every one of you have been set aside for God's purpose. Number two, I will rid you out of their bondage. This is the second cup. And it is the cup of deliverance. Israel was set free from slavery to Egypt. You can be set free from the slavery of sin. You don't have to serve sin. Jesus came so that you can be free from sin, shame, guilt, embarrassment. Number three, the third cup. It's a cup of redemption. This is a cup after the supper that Jesus drank from when he declared that this was a cup of the New Testament in his blood. The cup of redemption. This was his blood shed for you and me. Someone said, thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord, for redeeming me. Verse 4. And I will take to you, I mean, promise number 4. I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God. See, God brought you out of the world for him. This is the fourth cup, dissipated. And this cup is called the cup of praise and worship. This happened when the meal was finished and they were going to the garden of Gethsemane to pray. And on the way they sang all, they, they all sang hymns and worshiped the Lord. By the way, G, by the way, Jesus was praising and worshiping. If you have partaken of the cup of redemption, you need to break out in a spontaneous praise and worship because God loved you enough to send Jesus. Hallelujah! He set you apart. And he delivered you from the bondage of sin and to redeem and deliver you from the power of darkness and translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. Matthew 14, 12 says, In the first day of unleavened bread, when they, when, they, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? This meal was a joyous, holy, ceremonial meal to worship God for deliverance. This particular meal was one Jesus greatly desired to share with his followers so that he could reveal to them that it was also, watch this, a prophetic view with the prophecy pointing to him. Hallelujah. The first cup. Took the first cup. And they would all be around so they were lounging it says it was at this time in the meal that they did partake of cup number one the cup of sanctification this is the cup of sanctification and as a man of God in this house I'm representing you taking each one of these cups oh glory to God the cup of sanctification, this means you are separated unto God for his purpose. And then they would drink. Glory to God. Y'all felt that? <laughs> That's you come. The second cup. Hallelujah. the glory get ready to hit this place. I want you to take the second cup and bring it up. The second cup right here. Yes. The second cup. This is the cup of deliverance. Has the Lord ever delivered you out of anything? Has he delivered you out of any trouble? Did he deliver you out of sickness, disease? Did he deliver you out of COVID? Come on, somebody. This means we are set free from the slavery of sin. Pastor Sheila drew a couple of As they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, take ye, this is my body. See, because we understand that the bread represents his body. Someone say amen. amen. His body was given for our healing. since the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he 
his head and said, he gave thanks and he broke the bread. talking about a natural thing. We're going to pray that this bread will be changed from a carnal to a supernatural. Father, I bless this bread today. You gave your body to give us life. As we partake, I declare our bodies are healed. Oh, glory to God. I declare our emotional well-being is strong and no thought will enter our mind that is not of you. So, Father, we receive the bread now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So we'll take a piece of this bread as men of God in this house. Which represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Giving thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the many. Pastor Josh, come get cup number three. Come stand beside me. Father, I bless. You. This is the cup of redemption. Hold it up before the people say. The cup of redemption. Father, I bless this cup as we drink from this cup today. We celebrate the gift of life that you've given us. I thank you now for eternal life, starting now and continuing forever. Father, we receive this cup now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Cup number four. Glory to God. It is the cup of praise and worship. Anybody got a praise tonight? When they drunk from this final cup, cup, they went into a time of praise. They sung hymns as they went to Gethsemane to pray. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. said, Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine till that day that I drink, drink it in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives to pray. At this time, I'm going to ask if Pastor Josh will come, Minister Dario will come.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
It's all over the sanctuary. Father, we thank you for your miracle work and power. Is there anybody here tonight need healing in your body? The Lord Jesus Christ healed you over 2,000 years ago. Is there anybody here today? Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to lay our hands upon you. And God's power is going to touch you. Anybody else today? You need the Lord to touch you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Thank you, Lord, for the blood. Thank you, Lord, for the blood. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we lay out all this power of God. We lay our hands upon Mother Nell. Thank you, Lord, for going into God. Is there anybody else tonight? You need healing in your body. You need God to touch you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just begin to pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for your anointing. Thank you for him. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Those that's watching online, I release the power of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to move in your home. I release the miracle working power of God. Hallelujah. I, tonight is a night of importation. I feel the power of God. The Lord spoke to me September 5th, 1991. And he said, you have the ability to transmit the anointing by the laying on of hands. Watch this, Devin. He said, to all those that receive you, to all those that receive you, I know the power of God came in my arms and my hands on the way here for a purpose. And as you sow tonight, as we receive our offering, as you come through, I'm going to lay hands on everybody in the building tonight. So if you need an offering to below, you may take your seat. We're going to receive an offer, our offer tonight. Those that are watching online, you can go to shadowseedcook.org and plant your seed for the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. Remember, the seed has to die. You got to let it go. And let that seed die. Let that seed get in the ground. Come on, Angie, I'll see you. Hallelujah. I want you to sow your seed tonight. It's good to see my other son over here. Look at him. Glad he's here with us tonight. Father, I thank you. You know, I got so many sons and daughters around the city and around this world. Glory to God. We thank God for our spiritual, spiritual sons and daughters. I want you to sow, oh glory, your seed, and I want to lay hands on you. I don't just show whatever God tells you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to wait on God today. Did you enjoy? Did you learn something tonight? The holy angels are moving in our midst today. Glory to God. They were in our midst on Wednesday night. Singing and worshiping God with us. Glory to God. What an amazing service we had. See, sometimes God is not in the thumb in the light like tonight. There's a little anointing, but it's not, it's a different flow than Wednesday. But guess what? It's still a flow. Glory to God. In the anointing, it will still get the job done. Sometimes God is not in the whirlwind. 
into my ear. Sometimes God comes in a still, small voice. Hallelujah. If you're making out checks and come out to Dunamis, the church, Dunamis Christian Faith Church, those of you that are showing online, go to shannonccook.org and you can plant a seed on today. Hallelujah. Angels of the Lord are looking for us. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. So as you, as you are ready to show, I want you to stand on your feet. Jesus. Quick, 
I release the anointing on my baby. She's not passing, my baby. I love her. I know she put herself behind my back.
you go make that happen in the name of Jesus. Find your angels and go make it happen. God said, don't be afraid of no payment. He'll pay it off. You believe for a new miracle? Father, we thank you. That's our morning right there. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you for that. It's done. I'm telling y'all, the anointing is strong in here. Thank you, Jesus. Sunday's on the way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My son, let the anointing rest on him. Strengthen his body in the name of Jesus. Strengthen his body in the name of Jesus. Let healing flow. Refresh him flow. I rebuke all the power of the enemy to come against his body. Give him energy. Give him strength. Heal. Oh my God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I felt that. Glory to God. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. God is healing. He's doing something in that body, Sam. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and thank us. Did you enjoy the good party? Now for service. Can we thank God for Jesus tonight? Pastor, tell them how they need to go eat. We have refreshments. We have a meal prepared for everybody. We're going to be able to fellowship a little bit. Be sure you love on our visitors. I don't want to call them visitors. They VIP guests. Come on, mother. What you got, mother? My invitation to your wedding. I'm going to get the 